Now we've looked at caching recently in this series, we're going to move on to a new topic now and that's throttling in Django REST framework. Now if you're not familiar with this, API throttling is limiting the number of requests that can be sent by a single user over a certain period of time. So it's a way to limit the number of API requests that a given client can send and if they go over that limit then they don't get the response that they were previously getting. So imagine you have a public API and there's a free tier and users can send requests but you might only want to let users send let's say 100 requests a day or even 100 requests a week. You can actually implement stuff like this using throttling and Django REST framework has some tools built in for the task. So let's look at the documentation. Now throttling is similar to permissions and that's because it determines if a request should be authorised. But unlike permissions, throttles indicate a temporary state and they're used to control the rate of requests that clients can make to an API. And as with permissions, you can use multiple throttles in your Django REST framework application. Examples of that might be a restrictive throttle for unauthenticated requests and less restrictive ones for authenticated users. So we're going to see how to implement these in this video. Before we get started, if you want to support the channel, check out the coffee page that we have just below the video. And if you want to support the channel, also like and subscribe, it would be greatly appreciated. So let's get started and look at throttling in Django REST Framework. Now, if we look at the left-hand sidebar here, there's an API reference and you can see that REST Framework has three different objects for throttling. Now, the top two of these are for anonymous users and authenticated users respectively. And then we also have a scoped rate throttle as well. We're gonna look at all of these in this video. And what we can do to get started is look at setting the throttling policy for a REST framework application. Now you can do this globally using the default throttle classes setting and the default throttle rates setting. So we've already seen this REST framework setting and if we go to our project and go to the settings.py file, let's scroll down until we find that. So we have this REST framework setting and this handles global settings for our API. What we're gonna do is add a couple of things to this. So that's coming up in a second. Let's go back to the documentation and let's have a look at what's actually here. So we have the classes and these can be the ones that you see on the left hand side. And let's look at the throttle rates. Now we have a scope here and then we have a rate. So for example, for anonymous users, this rate is telling us that anonymous users can send up to 100 requests to our API every day. And for authenticated users, we can send 1000 a day. Now the period doesn't need to be a day, you can also have seconds, minutes, hours and days. And you can also set these policies on a pair view or pair view set basis. So instead of globally, as you can see here, we have a throttle classes property on the API view. Now let's start with the global setting. What I'm gonna do is scroll back up here and let's copy what we have here. And I'm gonna go back to VS Code and let's paste this in and modify this at the moment. Now I'm going to remove the user rate throttle and we can remove that scope at the bottom. And let's start with anonymous users. So if we hover over the anon rate throttle, it tells us that it's going to limit the rate of API calls that can be made by anonymous users. And what we're gonna do is change this from 100 a day. And for the sake of the video, I'm going to change this to two requests per minute. Now, once we've done that, I'm gonna start the Django server and let's go to the browser. And we can go to the slash products endpoint here and we get back a list of all of the products. So that was request number one. If I send a second request, we get back the same list of products. But notice now, if we send a third request, we get back a different response. We're told that the request was throttled and this endpoint is expected to be available again in 33 seconds. So the reason for this, again, going back to settings.py is because we've specified that anonymous users can send up to two requests per minute. If they go over that limit, then the request is gonna be throttled. And if we go back to the documentation, notice the HTTP response here. We're getting back a 429 response status code and that stands for too many requests. So that's a typical response when your API throttles the client. And there's also a header here called retry after and that has the number 33 and that corresponds to what we see here in the detail. And it means after 33 seconds, you should be able to send a request to the API and get back a valid response. Now it's been greater than 33 seconds now, so I'm gonna refresh this page and we get back the response. But again, if I do that again and one more time, then we get the API throttling and it's telling us now to wait 55 seconds before we can send the next request. So that's the anon rate throttle in Django REST framework for anonymous users. And these are typical HTTP status codes and some other headers that might be returned when you go over the limits that you've specified. Now what about for logged in users? For that one, we can use a different one and that's the user rate throttle. This is gonna throttle users to a given rate of requests across the API and it uses the user ID to generate a unique key to throttle against. 
Now if we go back to the top here, I'm going to copy the settings that we had. So let's copy the user rate throttle here. And we're going to bring that into the global settings. And that's in the default throttle classes. And then we can refer to the user scope by default here. And let's say that authenticated users can send up to three requests per minute. So slightly more requests here for authenticated users. Let's now go back to the browser and go back to our API. Now we've been using session authentication on this API, so I'm gonna do that just now. Let's log in as our admin user. Now once we've logged in, we can go back to the slash products endpoint. So we've sent one request to our API. Let's send a second request now. And let's now send a third request and notice that we do get back the response. That's because we're now logged in, so instead of two per minute, we can now send up to three per minute. And if we refresh this again, we get the throttling. So that means that authenticated users have slightly more requests available in a given minute. So that's the difference between the user rate throttle and the anon rate throttle. Now you can actually create different subclasses of these, for example, the user rate throttle, and that allows you to create flexible policies. So let's imagine we want a policy here where we have a maximum of 10 requests in a given minute, but we also want users to be able to send up to 15 requests an hour. Now what we're gonna do in the API application is create a new file here, and I'm gonna call this throttles.py. And I'm gonna paste some code in here. So we have two of these classes. One is called burst rate throttle, and the other is sustained rate throttle. And both of these inherit from this class here and we define a scope property and we're setting that to burst and to sustained. Now we can go back to settings.py and we can reference these. So what I'm gonna do is remove the user rate throttle and we can refer to the two subclasses that we created for these two throttles. And in the default throttle rates, what we're gonna do is refer to the scopes. Now the burst rate throttle had a scope of burst and that's gonna define 10 a minute. So 10 requests per minute allowed using that throttle class. And for the sustained one, we're gonna define 15 requests an hour. So it's 15 per hour. Now this is basically the example in the documentation for the user rate throttle. You can see the two classes here and you can see them being added along with some more realistic settings. So what these allow are a burst of up to 10 requests a minute. But if you do go beyond 10 per minute, you do get throttled in that case and you have to scale back. And there's also a sustained throttle that allows up to 15 requests per hour. Again, if you go above that in the given hour, you're going to be throttled. So in this context, a burst of requests, this represents a short term rapid fire rate limit. And of course, we're keeping the numbers quite low for this video, but it could be very different in a real production application. So this is gonna offer some protection from being spammed with a lot of requests, whereas the sustained rate gives you more longer term protection. It makes sure that even if someone's not bursting beyond 10 per minute, they still cannot send too many requests to your API over a longer period of time. I want to see an example of this. So I'm gonna save the settings and let's go back to our API here. And what I'm gonna do now is send 10 requests to the products endpoint. So I've sent 10 requests very quickly. And if we send one more request, notice that it's throttled. And this should now be available again in 48 seconds. Now I've waited about a minute, so I'm gonna start sending some more requests. And the thing I want to look at here is that if we send another five requests, we're going to reach this second limit here of 15 per hour. So let's go back here and I'm gonna send another four requests. So I've sent four, let's send one more request and notice that it's now throttled. And this time the expected time until we can send the next request is much greater. It's 3,502 seconds. So we now need to wait around about an hour before we can send more requests. And that's because we have the second throttle kicking in. That's called the sustained throttle. And these two are now working in unison together and that allows you to create a more flexible policy, for example, to protect against rapid fire requests and also to give a sustained rate over a greater period of time. And the purpose of these, of course, is to make sure that authenticated clients cannot send too many requests over a given period of time. And that might be important for a fair API policy amongst all of your clients. And let's see one final example with the throttle classes in Django REST framework. And we're going to look at the final one here called scoped rate throttle. So let's click this. This can be used to restrict access to different or specific parts of your API. And the throttle will only be applied if the view that's being accessed includes this throttle scope property. So here's an example where we have different view classes here in Django REST framework. And the top two both have this throttle scope of contacts. And the one at the bottom has a scope of uploads. Now, if we go down to the settings, notice that contacts and uploads appear here in the rates and they have different rates available. For example, contacts up to a thousand requests per day, much less for uploads, only 20 per day here. So this is scoped to this given key here. 
and that allows you to have different endpoints that use different rates. So let's see an example of that just now and go back to VS Code. Now what we can do is go to views.py and I'm going to go to the top here and let's target the product list create API view first. At the top of this what we're going to do is give it a throttle scope. So throttle scope and we're going to set that equal to products. And I'm going to copy this property and let's go down to the order view set, this one here. And let's add a second throttle scope and this is going to be different, this is going to be for orders. Now once we've added those we can go back to the global settings.py and let's remove these from before and we're going to have some new ones in here. So I'm going to copy this line of code to the line below and we can change the anon rate throttle to scoped. And then we can use the keys or the scopes that we defined, so we had one for products. And let's say we can send two requests per minute to product based scopes and for orders let's up that to four per minute. Now let's save this and go back to the browser and go back to our API. So on the slash products endpoint we can send up to two per minute. So let's send the first one and the second one. When we send the third one we get this new, this new response sorry, that throttles the request. And that's it, we can't send any more requests to product scopes until that time period is expired. If we go to slash orders though, notice we get back the orders so we can now send requests here. It's a different scope and that means it's a different throttle rate. And if I send the second request, the third request and the fourth request, we get them back. We specified the orders had four per minute here. So if we go back here to the orders endpoint and send another request, again we get the response telling us that the request has been throttled and that's because that is the scope here and it allows up to four per minute. So this is more flexible because different API endpoints or different API views and classes in your application can have different scopes and you can associate those scopes with different rates. Now this is going to work with different endpoints that have the same scope. So for example, if I refresh the orders page, we are now allowed to send these requests. If I grab the order ID here and before we send the next request, let's just send another request to slash orders. So that's two requests to the orders page. And then if we send a request to the detail page using that ID, we get back the detail response. We can send a second request, but notice if we send another one, this is now throttled because this endpoint here has the same scope as slash orders. And we've already sent two requests to both of them. So when we send another request to any of them, we're going to be throttled. Now the final thing I want to do is just show that we can actually do this on a per view basis. So what I'm going to do is just go back to the REST framework settings and let's remove the scoped rate throttle from default throttle classes. And let's go back to views.py and I'm going to go to the top here. And at the bottom of these imports, let's bring in one more and that's the scoped rate throttle. And we can then go down to, for example, the product list create API view. And we can define another property called throttle classes on the API view. And we can set that to a list and I'm going to pass in the scoped rate throttle. So regardless of what you set up here in settings.py, what's going to happen here is that this view class is going to use whatever you define as the throttle classes. So this is how you do it on a per view basis. And that's just about all I want to show here for throttling in REST framework. Those are the three different classes that you can use to implement this functionality. What I'm going to do to finish is just go back to the documentation and let's look a little bit more at how this actually works. So clients are identified using these headers. So we have x forwarded for and the remote adder WSGI variable. These are used to uniquely identify client IP addresses for throttling. And if we go down to this section here, the throttle classes provided by REST framework will use Django's cache backend. And for simple setups, the local memory cache will be okay. We are in this video currently using Redis, and that's something we set up in the last couple of videos. But it's worth noting that REST framework's throttling classes are going to use the cache backend. So that cache is basically going to track how many requests a given user has sent and it's going to keep that up to date. Now some final thoughts on throttling. Let's go back to the top of this page. I want to note this paragraph that we have here. So the application level throttling that REST framework provides should not be considered a security measure or protection against brute forcing or denial of service attacks. So this throttling here is on the application level and this does not necessarily prevent these DDoS attacks and so on. And the reason for that is that malicious actors will always be able to spoof IP origins. So as well as using these utilities that REST framework provides, there are other tools that can provide more robust security. 
And it's good to have these multiple defense layers in your application. So some examples of things you might want to use include things like web application firewalls. And you can find these, for example, on AWS. And you can use tools like AWS Shield to prevent against DDoS attacks as well. If you're on Azure, there is a DDoS protection service on there as well. And of course, there are tools like Cloudflare that can help with this as well. This application level throttling that's provided by REST framework is intended for implementing policies such as different business tiers and basic protections against service overuse. So this is more about the business logic and protecting your API from being overused than it is from protecting it from DDoS attacks and from brute forcing attacks such as trying to guess a password. So that's just a note at the end of the video on that. In the next video, what we're going to do is move on and look a little bit at testing in Django REST Framework, which provides some utilities for testing your applications. If you found this video useful and you want to support the channel, check out the coffee page. We've got a link below the video. And don't forget to give the video a thumbs up and we'll see you in the next video.